Hello, I'm Paul Pluter for the Paul Pluter Channel and today I'm doing a paid review for Nick. Hi Archie, greetings from New Jersey. Big fan of the channel, I've all, it's always very entertaining. While it would be hilarious to hear you rant about my Tag Hoyer Formula One Calibre 5, I know, total shitter, I actually wanted to see if you had any insight on this watch that was given to me by my dad. It's a Jules Jurgensen self-winding day date in 18k gold. I believe this company no longer exists or has any recent comeback from the from the dead as urban and has now recently come back from the dead as urban Jen Jen Jurgensen. Just wanted to know if you're familiar with this brand and perhaps this specific model. I don't know how old it is because I do know it's at least close to 40 years and it's under 35 mil. Please note, it's not on an original brand. PayPal payment sent. Please admit my last name. Thanks and apologies for the for poor quality of photos. Very interesting. <clears throat> Very interesting. And have I heard of that brand? I've actually, I actually have. And you know that... They, they they were never a hugely famous brand there. They were sort of they were there were a lot of Swiss names that existed which no longer do exist. And uh, I've done a bit of a a Wikipedia. Wikipedia Wikipedia is always good for this sort of shit here. I, I did a bit of a Wikipedia and uh, I found out Jurgen Jensen Jürgen Jensen, uh, Jules J Jürgensen, was a watch company founded in 1740 in Denmark. And it goes on to say, uh, anyhow, the, the, the company changed its name to Frederick Jürgensen in 1811. Uh, Jules Jurgensen produced many watches in Switzerland. Jules Jurgensen was sold to a company in the United States in 1936. And they produced watches until 1957. Uh, at which time it was first documented that the watches were made by others who... Well, a lot of makers did do that. They just put on a, a name on their, their watch. So that's not a big terminal sin. I dare say it's got some sort of ETA type movement in it. The fact that it's a solid 18 karat gold piece means it was probably a fairly expensive watch. This wouldn't have been just no idle shitter. This would have been a quite an expensive sort of piece. It's interesting. There's a number of brands that existed like this, which <coughs> with the quartz revolution, they kind of died. And I mean, there's brands like Technos. There's all sorts of brands that existed in that that mid-tier space. And, I mean, this was an age where the Swiss, the Japanese made rubbish. They made products that were just garbage. Hong Kong just made plastic toys. And, you know, you wanted a watch, you always wanted a Swiss watch. And that's what this was here. Looking at the case, it's very similar to an AP. I had a Audemars Piguet Ultra Thin Dress Watch, which was 30... 33, 34 mils, 33, 33 mils. It was a fucking small, small, that was sort of the fashion then. So it definitely is a men's watch. It's an automatic with a day date. So in the time period it's from, that would have been quite expensive. Obviously, if the guy had a bought a sports Rolex, you would be raking in the bickies, but he didn't. He bought this and uh, the rest is history, but... <coughs> There is a lot of, um, there are a lot of these Swiss brands which have sort of just disappeared. And uh, this was when Swiss watches were regarded as that everyone wanted a Swiss watch. So there were lower priced brands out there. That brand there, if it's in a gold case, it would have had to have been a pretty high end piece. Because gold is gold. It's expensive shit. So, um... That brand there, although it's not widely known, I have I have seen a few examples actually. They're not worth a lot, not terribly collectible. They're just sort of on the the shitter 
Uh, they're a Swiss watch. They were a good watch. If it's got sentimental value, keep the fucking thing. <clears throat> they're not worth a lot of money. They're not in the same league as an Audemars Piguet or a Patek. They were a lot cheaper than a Patek or an Audemars or a Vacheron. But it was still a quality Swiss watch in the day. They all were around that size. Patek made a lot of models in that genre, that size there. So it's it's not a terminal piece. It's just... That was the time it came from. Uh, I don't think it's really got much collectability. I mean, I mean, it'll always be a gold watch. It'll always be worth scrap, scrap value for the gold, and it's an automatic day day. Well, that that's quite a complicated movement. It'd be some sort of generic Swiss movement there, which wouldn't have been super cheap in the day. That would have been an expensive piece. Is it going to go up? No, unfortunately, you know, it's too small. It's too masculine to be a female watch. It's it's sort of it's trapped in that that kind of it's it's a men's watch. You know, if the market for watches for dwarfs exploded, it'd be valuable. But unfortunately, that's just unlikely because we've we've supersized. We want big stuff because it's all the hormones in the chicken. That's what it is. It's the hormones in the chicken. It's a great watch to have. It's a great heirloom watch. I'd look after it. I'd love it. I mean, I, 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 I got shitters from my father and grandfather. They got, gave me shitters. So um, it's a nice watch to have there. It's cool. It's got a family story. Enjoy and keep it. I'm Archie Luxury, reporting on these anonymous little shitter brands. See you later, fuckers. We specialize in the repair of Rolex and Patek Philippe watches. We've been doing the same thing for more than 25 years. We have a Rolex technician certified by Rolex who actually used to work for the company for many years, like if we do in the work on the factory. We completely disassemble the watch and we put it to work, like brand new condition. When you get the pre-owned watch, it's like if you get in a brand new unit. The only difference is the money.